Hello. What those clueless carpenters really needed was something smaller than tents. So let's sort it out for them. Suppose we start with an ordinary whole number like this one. 243. Do you remember what happens when you divide a number by 10? Each 100 becomes a 10. Each 10 becomes a unit. And each unit becomes a tenth. So the 243 becomes 24.3. Two tens, four units, and three tenths. Dividing by ten, the number moves one place to the right. Suppose I divide this number by ten. What do you expect the result will be? 2.43. What does that mean? Let's see. Each 10 becomes a unit. Each unit becomes a tenth. Each tenth becomes one tenth of one tenth. And here's one of them. 10 of these make one of these, and 10 of these make one unit. So one of these is one hundredth of a unit. So when we're dividing by 10, each tenth becomes a hundredth. 2.43. Two units, four tenths, and three hundredths. For measuring length, the unit that I'm using is one meter. For more accuracy, divide it into tenths. For more accuracy still, divide it into hundredths. Here's a tape measure with hundredths of a meter. The tenths are printed on the tape, but you have to count the hundredths. By the way, the zero is at the very end of the loop. So if you're measuring this table, you have to hold the zero end like this. Two meters, 2.9 meters, that's two meters and nine tenths, and two hundredths. This table is 2.92 meters long. And I am One point six meters, one point six one meters. So you can use hundreds for measuring your height in meters, and you can also use them for measuring longer distances as well. Here's Martin Gervin, the champion hammer thrower. It looks like a good throw and they're measuring the distance now. Here's the result, a throw of 68.22 metres. 68 metres, two tenths and two hundredths. Here's a trick you can play on your friends. After the green light comes on, I'm going to show you two numbers for less than a second. And you have to call out which is the bigger number. Now, don't wait for me to say go this time. Just call out as soon as you know which it is. Ready? This card says 2.79. That's two units, seven tenths, and 
nine hundredths. But this card says five. That's five units. If you wanted to, you could say five units, no tenths, and no hundredths. Five point naught naught. Writing it like this, it's easier to see which is the bigger number. How about these two numbers? Here's the decimal point, so the two is two units, and the three is three tens. 32, 32 point naught, or 32 and no tenths, if you like. How about the other one? Whoops, that's not right. Line up the decimal point. Six units, one tenth, and four hundredths. 6.14. This is a bathroom cabinet. And it needs a shelf. And the length of the shelf needs to be... Well, I'd estimate it's less than a metre, so it'll be naught point something. Naught point three six. That's 0.36 of a metre. One of these should do. Not point three eight, so that's too big. Not point three six. This should do it. Hmm. Do you know exactly what went wrong? This is the correct piece. And this is the piece that fell through. Now in each case, this is the nearest mark on the tape, 0.36 metres. Obviously we need even smaller fractions of a metre. And here they are, thousandths of a metre. Ten times this distance is this distance. There are a hundred of these in a metre, so there are one thousand of these in a metre. This is one thousandth of a metre. One unit, one tenth, one hundredth, one thousandth. By itself, naught, point naught, naught, one. Let's measure that shelf space again. That's naught point three six nine. So the shelf mustn't be more than 0.369 and it mustn't be less than the distance from the side of the cabinet to the edge of the bearing and that is 0.361 How long was the shelf? Point three six three. So the difference between the length of the shelf and the space it has to fit into is the difference between naught point three six nine and naught point three six three. Naught point three six nine, that's the shelf space 
take away 0.363. That's the length of the shelf. Nine thousandths take away three thousandths. That's six thousandths. Six hundredths take away six hundredths. No hundredths. Three tenths take away three tenths. That's no tenths. Can you see what's wrong? By itself, it just says six. We need a decimal point. This is the units column. No units take away no units. That's easy. Naught point oh oh six of a meter from here to here. One potato. One thousandth of a potato. One litre of orange juice. One thousandth of a litre of orange juice. One long piece of string. One thousandth of it. You know what a math score program looks like? Well, here's just one thousandth of a program, all on its own. Ready, go. Now, here's something that needs some very careful thinking. So I'll start with something quite simple. Here are three sandwiches. If I share them out equally between two people, what will each get? How many sandwiches? One and a half. Suppose I check that on my calculator. Three. Now I need to divide that by two, and it equals 1.5. Half of three is 1.5, one and five tenths. No problem so far. Half of three is 1.5. The calculator says so, and the sandwiches say so. Half of three is 1.5. Hmm. Are you sure? Let's see. Three pounds. That's one for Elaine and one for me. Hmm. What about this one? You need some change. Then each person gets 1.5 pounds. The trouble is, we don't usually call this 1.5 pounds. Of course, this is worth half a pound. It's worth 0.5 of a pound. But it doesn't say pounds. It says 50 pence. If anyone asked me how much money this was, I'd almost certainly say 1 pound 50 and I'd write it like this. 1.50 pounds. One whole pound, five tenths of a pound, and no hundredths of a pound. Here's another pile of money. Two tens, one unit, that's 21 pounds, six tenths of a pound, and three hundredths of a pound. The decimal point separates the whole numbers of pounds from the fractions of a pound. 21.63 pounds. Suppose I just had the coins. 
point six three pounds. Nothing wrong with that. But we usually call this sixty three pence or sixty three p. And if you say sixty three, what you mean is six tens and three units. So either you'd be wrong, or these headings are wrong. It's no good putting this in the tens column because this is for tens of pounds. What's really happening is that we're thinking the pennies on their own. It's as if there were two separate headings. So this has got two names. It's either ten pence or one tenth of a pound. And this is either one penny or one hundredth of a pound. But if you've got an amount of money that's less than one pound, like this, then of course you think of it as just pence, thirty-five pence. You don't need the decimal point because you're thinking in pennies. Your unit is one penny. Three tens and five units, 35 pence. But if you've got pounds as well, then this is your unit. We've got two tens, one unit, three tenths, and five hundredths. 21.35 pounds. And talking of hundredths, let's see how those carpenters are getting along. <laughs> 